Hi guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. I'm going to talk quickly today because this is a fairly technical uh, topic and there's about a bit of information. I'm going to try to simplify it. How do they make nitrox? When you go into a, I'm assuming you're a nitrox diver and you want to use nitrox, that's another whole topic entirely. But assuming you are and you go into a dive store and you want to use, I want some nitrox. Give me a mix, 32%. Uh, where does it come from? You know, they don't, they, they don't buy it. It doesn't get shipped in in boxes and, you know, it doesn't work that way. They have to make the nitrox. And some method they have to have to get that 32% nitrox and then get it into your tank. How do they do that? Well, first of all, let me explain, there's a variety of ways. And no particular way is the best. It depends on many, many circumstances, many, many uh, things have to be considered. Uh, how much nitrox they sell. Uh, how how easy it is for them to get the nitrox, the different suppliers of the different gases required, mainly oxygen. Uh, how much money they're prepared to invest in their nitrox supply. Uh, how technically inclined are the people at the dive store, and so on. There's many many factors to consider when a dive store owner decides he wants to start supplying nitrox for his divers. But let's deal with a couple of them. Okay, first of all, the by far the easiest method is to for the dive store to buy pre-bottled nitrox. So you see, you can buy any gas. You can buy carbon dioxide or nitrogen or, or acetylene or oxygen, any gas you want from a gas manufacturer. This is a big plant and that's what they do. They get gas in or they make gas, they put it in the big tanks and then they sell it. So if I was a dive store owner and I did not want to make a big investment, I had just a couple of nitrox customers, I wanted a quick, easy, inexpensive way to supply my customers with nitrox, I would call up the gas supplier and I would say, send me over two bottles of 32%. That's what he would do. And so I would have two bottles, two big bottles like this, 450 some odd cubic feet, whatever, whatever it happens to be, and uh, of nitrox. And if you came into the store and said, hey, Bill, <clears throat> my name's Alec, but let's pretend here. Hey, Bill, I want a 32% nitrox fill. Let me take your tank. I've connected to this tank, open the two valves, fill it, 32%, out you go, and, and charge you for it, and away you go. Everybody's happy. So pre-mixed bottles, that's one way to get your nitrox. Downside, first of all, it's not going to be inexpensive. This is probably the most expensive way to, to, uh, to buy nitrox, so the dive store won't make as much money. But again, Remember the factors. He doesn't sell very much. He only has a few customers, doesn't want a big investment. So he is saved on that side, he loses on this side. Also, there are some other practical limitations. He is limited in the fills that he can give by the pressure of the supply bottles. He may have to get a booster, what's called a booster, usually by a company called Haskell. That's the biggest name in scuba. And a booster is simply a device that takes air from this tank, puts it into that tank. But it it's tricky because it can take air from this tank, and this tank is at 2,000 psi, and it can put air, that air, into this tank at 3,000 psi. How does it do that? Well, that's why it's called a booster. A booster. It can take the pressure out of here, boost the pressure, put it into there. Boosters are not inexpensive, $5,000 roughly for a, a small booster. A large, high-capacity booster would be a lot more than that. So they may have to make an investment anyway. But quickest, cheapest, easiest way to get an Atrox mix is to buy a big tank of it, a big bottle of it, and then fill your scuba tanks from it. The next, probably the second most common method, if not the most common method for, for uh, making Nitrox is what's called partial pressure method. The partial pressure method. And that's very simply a method by which the dive store owner calculates what the pressure of each gas in the mixture is needed to be to equal 32%. And this goes back to Dalton's law of partial pressures. Now you may or may not have learned this in your scuba class. When I took my scuba course back in 1960, we had to know Dalton's law of partial pressures. We had to be able to repeat the law. We had to be able to spell his name and know his date of birth and date of death. <laughs> it was quite a course. But anyway, you don't even need to learn that information anymore. All you need to know for the purpose of this is that if you have a mixture of two gases, oxygen and nitrogen, shall we say, and the oxygen forms 30%, and the nitrogen obviously 70% of that, then the pressure, the total pressure, let's say 3,000 psi, the total pressure of 3,000 psi is split between the two gases, and it's the same proportion. So the oxygen, which is 30% by volume, 
also is 30% of the pressure. The nitrogen, which is 70%, the remaining volume, also gives 70% of the pressure. You see? So the partial pressures of each of the gases in the mixture always totals the total pressure. Don't worry about it if you didn't completely understand that. But what it means is, the dive owner can take your tank, and you can say to him, I want a nitrox mix of 32%. The dive owner will go to a little calculator and he will be able to quickly determine how much oxygen to put into your tank. And he'll do that. So his computer will tell him to put in 462 PSI of oxygen. So he'll take his oxygen cylinder and connect it to your scuba tank and he'll put 462 PSI of pure oxygen into your cylinder. <clears throat> then he will fill the rest of the cylinder with regular air. And his little computer, the little computer program, tells him if you put in 462 psi of pure oxygen and then the rest up to 3,000 is with normal atmospheric air, you will end up with a mixture which is 32% oxygen. That's what you want, a 32% nitrox mix. And he can do that very simply. It really is quite simple. Again, sometime, uh, uh, some of the practical issues might be that he may have an oxygen supply bottle that is only at 500 PSI, and he has to put in 800 PSI. He's not able to do that. It might be difficult, again, without a booster or some other special equipment. So using partial pressure is not perfect. Although it is relatively inexpensive, it doesn't require a big investment in materials or machinery. It does have one downside. Since, when using the partial pressure method, the dive store owner is using pure oxygen. So pure oxygen is going into your cylinder. Then your cylinder and the valve and everything else that might be in contact with that pure oxygen has to be cleaned. It has to be what's called oxygen clean. Not oxygen ready, not nitrox ready, oxygen clean. To put pure oxygen into a valve in a cylinder that is not oxygen clean can lead to a serious problem, potentially a fire, potentially an explosion. So there are some downsides to that system as well. It's quite common, however, because of it's, it's inexpensive. All right, let's talk about another very common system. And uh, this method uh, is commonly called the stick. Now, <laughs> when I say the stick, I'm actually using a brand name. The stick is a special device that was developed by, uh, by the scuba industry, by scuba divers, to produce nitrox. And let me explain what it is, very simply. With this system, there's a fairly large investment in initial cost. But the beauty of the stick, using the stick for producing nitrox, is that you can produce nitrox indefinitely. You can just keep making it as much as you want. It's quick and easy and very safe. In fact, <clears throat> you don't even really need to have oxygen clean cylinders and equipment because the nitrox that you're using it's not oxygen. It's enriched air. There's no 100% oxygen any time. Any time the oxygen content in air gets above about 40%, then the likelihood of problems, because the oxygen content is high, gets higher. We, using the stick, if you want a 28 or a 30, a 32 or a 36 percent nitrox mix, that's what comes out of the fill whip and goes into your tank. So there's some benefit there. You're not using pure oxygen in the diver's tank. So how does it work? Well, really it's very simple. You use a stick. Now, Kevin, I want you to look up here at the stick, a black thing. It doesn't look all that impressive, does it? It looks like a piece of ABS with a couple of plumbing fittings on it. Well, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Now, not quite that simple. Most dive stores, <clears throat> well, some do try to make it themselves. Some, most dive stores now would purchase a stick a commercially made stick. You'll notice at the very top, Kevin, there's a, what looks to be an air filter. And that actually is an air inlet. Air gets sucked in there at the very top. And part way down, you'll see a plastic line going in to the stick, into that black stick. You see that? And then right here, Kevin, you see this device right here? That's a sensor, it's specifically an oxygen sensor. So you have air coming in the top, you have that line, which I'll tell you right now, is an oxygen line. Yes, that puts in pure oxygen. So air comes in, pure oxygen goes in, and they mix. 
inside the stick. That's right. And then as the mixture, which now is oxygen and air, gets down to here, you can measure it. Make sure it's exactly what you want. Then it comes down into this corrugated tube and into your compressor. So you simply take the compressor, hook it up to the diver's tank, start the compressor, turn on the oxygen tank, and set it based on the reading of the oxygen coming out of the stick, which is right here. And when this reading hits 32, you open the diver's tank and fill it with 32%. Now I have simplified the process. It's not quite that simple, but it's pretty close. And all you have to do now is monitor and make sure that the mixture being produced by the air and oxygen coming in through the stick is actually 32% at this point. From there on, it simply goes into the compressor, 32% nitrox, gets compressed, and goes into the diver's tank. I make it sound very simple. What's the downside to the stick? I've told you the upside, quick, easy, high volume, low maintenance. What's the downside? Well, you got to buy a fair bit of equipment. First of all, the stick. They're not inexpensive, but they're not cheap either. Not normally would a diver buy a stick on his own. You also have to have a steady supply of pure oxygen. You have to have a method to control that oxygen. Here we're measuring the oxygen level, but we have to control it. Suppose this says 26 and we want 30. We have to change it, don't we? Take a look over there, Kevin, and you can see in the corner the oxygen bottle with the green knob. Gauges, one gauge shows how much oxygen is in that tank. The other gauge shows the pressure of the oxygen coming out of the tank. That's controlled with a big green knob. It's actually a regulator, just like your tank regulator. And there's another little knob over there. It's a needle valve. And with that needle valve, you can very precisely control the amount of oxygen going into the stick and getting mixed with the air. And how do you know you have the right amount? Well, right here. Watch right here. When it hits 32, you're mixing the right amount of oxygen. Time to start filling the diver's tank. I make it sound simple. It actually is pretty simple once the system is set up. Other expenses though, the compressor, yeah. You're putting in enriched air. You're putting in a higher level of oxygen. So for safety's sake, this compressor has to be oxygen ready as well. Ready to pump nitrox. If you have a normal compressor, which is really just a big pump, then you have to have it specially cleaned. You have to be using synthetic oil, normal oil, which is commonly used in dive store compressors, based on fossil fuels, are much more likely to be a problem if you're using nitrox enriched air. So you have to have synthetic oil. If you're using normal oil, you have to change it to synthetic oil, which involves a bit of, bit of work, a bit of cleaning, new oil, running, change it again, new oil. The machine itself has to be specially cleaned, so that every bit and piece in it, there's no carbon, anything else to cause any problems. And then again, normally you would have to have a booster, a booster pump, one of those Haskell pumps that I mentioned earlier. So in total, <clears throat> you're probably looking at an investment of about five to ten thousand dollars at least in order to put in <clears throat> a system like this with the stick, compressor, booster, and oxygen. Not a whole lot of money if you're selling a lot of nitrox, but it does require that bit of an investment. Again, not something a diver himself would normally do, although it has been done. Anyway, folks, there's a little bit of information. You've been asking, how do they make nitrox? And I thought I would take a few minutes and tell you about three methods that are very common in dive stores. The next time you go into a dive store, whether you're a nitrox diver or not, take a look at the fill station itself and see if you don't recognize the type of machinery I've described today. And you may be able to say something intelligent to the dive store. Oh, you're using the stick. That's pretty neat. I know how that works. <laughs> something like that. Anyway, I hope that was beneficial. Keep the comments coming. We're going to do some more on nitrox in, in, a, in a couple of series coming up. How to clean your equipment for nitrox. Does it need cleaning? Does it not need cleaning? And some more questions like that uh, that I think you might uh, like some of the information. Okay, it's Alec Pierce. I'm off now. Tech Tips. Talk to you again soon.